Welcome back everyone, I'm Dayglo Buffalo and this is Let's Play Blade Runner. When we last left off, we were in Guzo's office having just retired one of the replicants that had apparently attacked the run sitter animal shop. So, our boss told us we can take the rest of the day off and I intend to do just that. Select destination. We, Your apartment. We live apparently just a block over from the police station. Actually, I was very disappointed that in Blade Runner 2049 they changed the design of the police station. I thought the design of the original police station is really iconic. Oh, and who is there? Rumor has it you've been earning your stripes, McCoy. Working on it. Keep it up. You just might have a future in this business. I understand it's got a hell of a retirement plan. You VK the mark before retirement? Didn't have to. That's why they call it the magic. I'm starting to understand. You ever retire a human, your career is over. Remember that. I checked with you and air. Looks your rep swung that Moonbus massacre last month. They ever find the Moonbus? Disappeared into thin air. Brian thinks it crashed out in the Kipple. How many reps we talking about? Enough. They're Nexus Sixes. So don't take too much slack. Gotcha. Kipple is again a reference to the novel to android dreams of electric sheep where kipple is basically referenced anything as detritus crap and uh, the kipple he is referring to specifically is basically the ruins on the outskirts of the city so i like the way like this fan spinning with the light behind it that's a very Blade Runner image, and it's really nicely animated. So let's go to the elevator. Your floor number, please. And apparently we live in the same building that Deckard lives in, because this is the same elevator. McCoy, 88F. 88. Thank you. And here we can kind of see how rough the character model looks. I lived case. with the best gal I'd ever seen. She'd cost me about a year's salary, but she was worth it. Who's the best dog in the whole world? If you click here... Here you go, baby. Dinner time. We can actually feed our dog. Then, uh... Here is the Esper machine that we have at home, so we can actually look at pictures and examine pictures at home as well. But we don't have a link up with a database, so, you know, there we might get more information. If we head through here, the coin marches right through and heads out onto the balcony. Which basically is a callback to a very, very similar shot that is in the movie with Deckard standing on the balcony and Blade Runner Blues playing in the background. Even though this is a remake of Blade Runner Blues, uh, this uh, the soundtrack was not made by, by Vangelis, but the guy who made the soundtrack for this game, I believe replayed some of the original tracks from Vangelis, and this is one of them. This is Blade Runner Blues, and I am not sure if this is going to show up on the on the copyright claim, so let's just head back inside. And our answering machine has a message for us. I was angry with my friend. I told my wrath. My 
wrath did end. I was angry with my foe. I told my wrath. My wrath did grow. Erase and reset. Somebody was nice enough to leave us some poetry. Apparently, they back then hadn't contemplated cell phones for the future. And here we have a bathroom that we can send McCoy into, but, you know, we respect his privacy, so we don't actually follow him in there. And basically, the last thing we can do is finally go to bed. I mean, he had been out for 12 hours on before the game started, so he must be very tired. Portrait of the Sleep Deprived. Got your delivery here, man. Uh, what? Kingston Kitchen. Oh, yes, right. Hold on. Is this what the gravity be like on Mars? Oh, no. It's about a third of what we got here on Terra. Real comfy. How about turning that dial, okay? When I say... Oh! Please, can you control your wrath? I'll have you know that Ricky's a purebred chihuahua, and he's totally real. Things going good at Tyrell Corporation? Boring, boring. Old man Tyrell's been on a Wagner kick lately. He never shuts up. You also do outside work? Sweetie, I never go outside. It's bad for the glands. How about Nexus 6? You know a lot about them? I think you should be going now. <laughs> Understand the good. It holds deep meaning for me now. Where be your research on Nexus 6? I need test studies, contacts, the works. Only civic leader. Expert. Terrestrial gravity. <laughs> One more minute, you be swallowing this explosive. Three more minutes, they be hosing you off the true life building across town. Oh, I swear. I don't have anything. If I did, I'd give it to you. My people sick and dying. You tell me something. Talk to Dr. Tyrell. Tell me something I don't know. The organ designers, uh, Mirage, Hannibal Chu, Luther and Lance, they're closer to him than I am. Where? DNA Row. They're all working down on DNA Row. Oh, no, no, no. You one miserable package man. No, no, no please don't. Pick up. Hope you aren't camped out there with a bottle of tequila. Oh, very funny. Early bird slays the worm, McCoy. Don't worry. I'm up, Lieutenant. What's the buzz? One of Tyrell's employees got his fat face splattered all over the marble interior of the Tyrell building. Inside? That's right. But we also got a sweet little break on it. Tyrell's surveillance system recorded the whole shebang. Beautiful. How many perps? Just one. I don't know if it's related to the runs that are dealer or not. Tyrell Security will have the disc for you when you get there. You'll be good, killer. Well, we could say the new day started with a bang. Let me quickly save. And, all right, let's head out. Feed the dog, of course, before we go out. Here you go, baby. Dinner time. Oh. Checking if there was anything. Your floor number, please. Oh, off to the roof. And let's get in our spinner and spin the heck out of here. Select destination. We're Tyrell going Pyramids. to the Tyrell building.
McCoy, LPD. Uh, yeah, just a minute. Where do I go? Grav test on the east wing, 66th floor. Uh, here's the footage from the security cameras. You get a pretty good look at the man's face. How'd he get past you guys? He pretended to be a delivery man. Dr. Eisendoller ordered in a lot, so it didn't seem unusual. I may have more questions for you later on. Yes, sir. Okay, so we got a new disc with more pictures that we can later look at. And here we are outside the gravity bubble, or whatever that is. So let's take a look. There's a few things that stick out like sore thumbs. So let's take a look at those first. The earring was shaped like an insect. I didn't know much about jewelry, but it looked like junk to me, like the cheap crap sold at the stands and shops of Animoid Row. So we got a dragonfly anklet and a dragonfly earring. Is there something here? No, it doesn't look like it. It was a Tyrell sales brochure for the Nexus series, the kind of glossy hype that ends up littering the floor at trade shows. This one was for the new entertainment model, a comedian designed to entertain the troops off-world. Okay. Very important stuff. Well, I guess there's nothing there. But we can interact with this computer Someone here. had tried to access a bunch of protected files on the Tyrell network and failed. Not just once, but a dozen times. Tyrell engineers might forget their passwords, but what would the GravLab boys need with replicant DNA sequences and incept dates? I couldn't even begin to guess what Eisendoller's password was. All right, I think that's all we can do out here. Let's head inside. Jesus. I've seen worse, but not by much. Learn anything? You could strain him through a sieve. He doesn't look like you can strain him through a sieve, unless that sieve has, like, very, very large mesh. This earring yours? Maybe it belongs to that other cop who was up here, the babe with the shades and the cigarettes. Ain't her style. Call her babe to her face, you're liable to end up with a severe limp. Well, Steele was saying in uh, her notes on the other crime scene that she was looking at... She was looking for an explosives expert, and this guy was using explosive, and also he was a Rastafarian fella. If you spot anything you think I ought to know about, tell me. Absolutely. So, a takeout box from Kingston Kitchens. The dog collar has a name on it. Ricky, maybe? What do you want to bet that this guy used his dog's name as a password? I'd seen more dead animals than live ones in the last 24 hours, and now it was dogs. Three of them. I thought about Maggie and nearly threw up. Any idea if they were real dogs? Was he asking him? I'd seen more dead animals than yeah, live ones, and now it was... This. I thought about... Any idea if... Uh, I don't know if there's anything else besides... Obviously, he'd been killed with an explosive, and not just because he'd been plastered on the wall with a thousand strokes. The detonator wire I pulled out of his skull told the whole story. The killer was an expert. The charge had been big enough to do the job, but not big enough to shatter the soundproof walls of the float chamber. But I wondered why the killer didn't just shoot him. Okay, so we got a detonator wire. Disgusting. Well, let's see if we were right, and he actually did use his dog's name as a password. Eisendoller had used his dog's name as a password. The Tyrell brass wouldn't be too happy if they knew I was snagging a copy of their files, but someone had wanted them bad enough to kill Eisendoller, so I figured they must be worth having. Well, there we go. Lagging behind again? Guza didn't say anything about me working with a partner. Oh, in a pig's ass, Slim. No, I'm following up on my own. Could be it's linked to this Tyrell debacle. You take a look at this crime scene? 
Yeah, it's a real doozy, Slim. Worse than watching Guza eat. Make sure you skip a meal before you go up. I just came from upstairs, you didn't notice? What kind of detective are you? I wanted to ask her about the other thing, but she took off, so I guess we'll just have to talk to this guy. You friendly with Eisendeller? Most of the employees they see coming in morning and night, but old Marcus, I mean, uh, Dr. Eisendeller, he almost never left his lab. He afraid of somebody? I think it had something to do with the air outside and the germs. I once heard him complain about it. Smart. What was his job? Grub test chief engineer. The lab runs tests to see how a replicant would perform in different planetary gravitational fields. That kind of thing. One of the other engineers could tell you more. You know if anyone lost an earring like this one lately? Not one of the employees, that's for sure. The boss enforces a strict dress code around here. How did Eisendeller's moo moo fit in? <laughs> hey, you know, company rules only apply to the lesser mortals. How do I get in to see the big boss? You don't, unless he wants to see you. Okay. How do I make him want to see me? Well, you could call his personal assistant. Who is? Don't know offhand. Yeah, I get the picture. Do you know anything about Tyrell's computer system? Security is tight as a drum, if that's what you're asking. Somebody tried to access restricted data from the terminal in Dr. Eisendeller's office. But they couldn't get in. Yeah. Looks like Dr. Tyrell keeps his files safer than he keeps his employees. I may have more questions for you later on. Yes, sir. It's actually surprising how loud the rain is, even though the ceiling is quite a ways away. Select destination. Uh, Police station. Let's head back. Check in and see what kind of information we can rustle up. During his last election campaign, Governor Kolvig promised a bold new plan of action to clean up the worst regions of the highly toxic debris that surrounds our city, the so-called Kipple. Just how much progress has been made since then? We spoke to the governor just before his weekly meeting with the city council. Our studies have shown that the Kipple's effect upon Los Angeles is minor. The radiation and toxic waste is contained in relatively small pockets, all miles distant from the city center. Nevertheless, Cleaning things up out there is a worthwhile goal, especially with the thousands of specials living on the city fringes. For now, all I can say is that we're looking at several options, and I'm sure everyone will be pleasantly surprised by our final proposal. Specials is again a reference to the book. Um, in the book, the people that were called specials were the ones that were affected by the radiation or whatever and had like uh, certain illnesses or certain mutations. Um, it also kind of came up in the movie, even though it wasn't called special, but uh, JF Sebastian has Methuselah syndrome, which means he ages quickly. And so the, he would be one person who would be considered a special in this in this world and usually uh, those people had like certain restrictions either for the kinds of jobs they could do but basically the most important one that is that they couldn't move off world they can pass the medical test all right so let's look at the pictures scanning video disc one enhanceable image found. Adding enhanceable photographs to Kaya database. Tyrell right, grab test see. lab. Well, the obvious thing would be to look at this guy's face. The earring was shaped like an insect. I didn't know much about jewelry, but it looked like junk to me. Like the cheap crap sold at the stands and shops of Animoid Row. Give me a hard copy of that. So, we have a picture of the perp. Okay, we 
get. A picture of the gun, maybe? No. Maybe the dog? Maybe this dog. The dog collar has a name on it. Ricky, maybe? Give me a hard copy of that. So another redundant clue. No, that's just food. A takeout box from Kingston Kitchens. Give me a hard copy of that. Another redundant clue. Can we maybe get a look at the explosive? No, I don't think so. Is that it, maybe? Hmm. Take a closer look at Eisendollar. Not sure why would we would need a picture of him. I mean, he's dead after all. Nope, just more crap. Is that anything? Just some wires or some tubes. Or something or other. So basically, besides the picture of the guy, it was all redundant clues. Um, at least the stuff that I found. Let's take a look. So now we have Lucy, Izo, suspect J149B0. Someone had tried to act. The earring was shaped like an. The detonator wire I pulled out of. The earring was shaped. Kingston. Let's take a look here. DNA Marcus. The dog collar. The dog collar has a name on it. Ricky, oh. maybe? The, do yeah. the dog collar has Redundant. a name. I checked with you and air. Looks your reps. Kingston Kitchens. Where have I heard that? One of Tyrell's employees got his... It was a Tyrell sale. Come on. Most of the employees they see coming in morning and night, but old Marcus, I mean, uh, Dr. Eisendoller, he That's... almost never left his lab. Uploading personal clue database. Downloading mainframe clue database. Clue database transfer complete. New clues added to personal database. Please check Kaya. So let's see. I don't see any new clues. No, not here either. Nope, I don't see any new clues, but oh well. Let's check in with the boys in the lab. Anything else? Nah, the place has been pretty quiet nope. the last... Nothing new here. 
So maybe Guza's got some info for us. And he is not in. What is we this? We get a new weapon shipment? Oh. Huh. Interesting. Maybe we can ask the guy at the shooting range about that. We get a new weapon shipment? Yeah, Guza requisitioned a couple of cases for the assault teams. Let me guess. He's planning on taking out a small city. Lieutenant's a big believer in overkill. I've gotten all I can from that. Can we get some new weapons? No, that's not what I wanted to do. That weapon shipment just came in. You got the paperwork handy? Why? You got a pressing need to rummage through my private files? Yeah, I forgot you were keeping your lacy underthings in there. Look, Jack, I just want to see what they're charging for a crate of rifles these days. Too damn much if you ask me, especially at the rate the assault teams are losing them. And I guess there ain't no harm in it. Losing them? You keeping busy, pal? Come back at me when you got something worthwhile, McCoy. I think if the assault teams were losing them, you know, somebody would, I don't know, give them a stern talking to? Not sure what this is useful for, but I guess we'll eventually find out, maybe? Select destination. So let's see. Now, Animoid Row. Animoid Row has been added because I believe that's where Kingston Kitchen is. Again, a set piece straight out of the movie. You know who deals in insects down here? You don't want insects? They're no good companion. But fish, fish are good. I have every kind of fish for you. Blowfish, dorado, miniature sailfish. Very friendly. No thanks, I got a dog at home. Fish just as good as dog. No, my dog is real. Real? Oh, you must make lots of money. Let's get back to insects, official LPD business. Ah, down at end of Animal Row, you see big green sign? You try there. Good luck with dog, friend. Hope he stays healthy. She. Well, at the end of Animoid Row, there's a big dragonfly sign. I wonder if that is supposed to attract our attention. And I wonder if we will find any information there regarding to the jewelry. But uh, I think we will find that out next time. So for now, I'll thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like or a comment below and subscribe to stay up to date. And I will see you in the next part. So until then, have a better one.